Hey everyone, Hobo for Craft, aka Mr. Hobo here, and I'm gonna be bringing you a commentary today Protoss versus Terran, some do's and don'ts. But the very first do of the day, before we get to any of that, is do go check out Seagred012's channel. That's S I E G R E D 012. And by O, I mean zero. Uh, because he gave me my hella sweet background. And uh, he also made a really nice overlay for me, and he's a really nice guy. Uh, really glad it, he did that. So if you ever need something like that done, definitely uh, PM him. He's really nice. Uh, got it to me right away, and uh, definitely looks sweet. Anyway, like I said, some Protoss vs. Terran do's and don'ts. I know a lot of Protoss do have uh, trouble against Terran, especially with early game aggression, so I thought I would bring this to you guys, and uh, just going to start this up. I, saw, I was watching my uh, first shoutcast, or no, my, my commentary of uh, which the, how to keep Zerg pressured, and it sounded like I needed to be on, on uh, antidepressants, so sorry about being a negative Nancy there or whatever, I think I had just woken up, so sorry about that, but we're going to have Straylock versus Ducklodra. Ducklodra I'm unfamiliar with, but he does play pretty well this game. And as you guys notice, it is on Desert Oasis, which is a pretty large map. And because of this, we are going to see uh, Ducklod, he does go for a more economic build. And we're going to see how that plays out for him later. And by economic build, I mean he is going to use a lot of Chrono Boost on this Nexus uh, to pump out those probes. But the build order we're going to see here is a 12 racks. Oh, uh, I should pa have paused right there, I guess. Oh, no. Uh, sorry about that. We do see, uh, well, it is a 12 racks, but it is a 10 supply depot. I didn't mean to mislead you there. And a 14 gateway, and then uh, an assimilator following right after that, after a 10 pylon, of course. And this is a good placement right here for the pylon because you don't want it want to have any cheese, anything of that sort happen to you, uh, such as a fl factory floating in and dropping, kind of into the rainbow style. But you can also warp in units right here if you're pushing hard in the middle or wanting to get to your opponent's base very quickly. So it's very good placement right there. We did get an orbital command at about 15 or 16. You can go either one. I wouldn't recommend over 16. But the cybernetics core did go down at about 17. Uh, same with that. You don't want to go above 19. That's really cutting it. Uh, so make sure you stay below that. And the thing about using all the chrono boosts that Duckload Ra has on his Nexus is... Um... Is it this game? Uh, well, he's well. One thing is that he is a little short on uh, getting this warp gate technology out, and he can't chrono boost out the stalker. And I just want to point something out really quick: is he did not go for one zealot, which some people do like to do. If uh, it, it's just more defense, and they just feel safe that way. Uh, can also stop workers from building things like a refinery in your base, and then just run running away. But he did opt to go just for the just for the stalker, so he does save some time and some minerals in a sense. I uh, just wanted to point that out, and the reason he did that is because it's a larger map. He doesn't have to worry about as early of a push. Um, just going to speed this up a little bit. And around 27, your second racks should definitely be done. And what players do like to do you should do this is right at this timing you're gonna get your second refinery and then you're gonna throw down this reactor right away as soon as this finishes you wanna throw down your reactor and this is the reason you're gonna be able to pump marauders out of this like like uh... no problem you have the tech lab down everything's fine after you pump about two marines out um, cause you're gonna need those anyway and you wouldn't have the the resources to to th or the time to throw down the tech lab in the first place but so now you have the tech lab you want to get concussive shells right away, of course, and just start pumping out marauders. And then with this, when this gets the reactor up to second racks, then you can just start pumping out marines uh, like nobody's business. One thing Ducklord Ra does opt to do uh, in this match is he does go for an early expand. Uh, I don't really like this play, even though 
there is this long distance, which is, I assume, why he did this. Um, but why I do not like it is because um, he didn't really go for that early of of um, uh, what was I going to say here? That early of a four gate. And I mean, when you are going to go four gate, you don't want to have to spend a lot of minerals on saturating your expo and pumping out a lot of units. It kind of defeats the purpose. And he doesn't really have anything whatsoever to defend this. Uh, we do see two stalkers, but if this force were to wa walk over right now, it would be a good game. Um, and he's just now getting uh, all these warp gates. And uh, so that is a don't. That is a don't for me, is do not expo when you cannot defend it well. That seems pretty obvious, but oh well. Uh, here is a do. Do gain a lot of map sight as it will be very helpful. Pretty self-explanatory. In one of these games we do see a lot of harassment so it does give you a heads up in that sense. And you can see just how many marines. Look at all these marines he has been able to pump out of this one barracks because of this reactor. And here's a very standard transition that we're going to see after this two racks. We're going to get a factory and a starport one of each down. And we're gonna see the factory finish first, and then that will switch. Uh, it will throw down a reactor, and it will switch with the starport, which will then double pump out medevacs. Uh, and there, there are the medevacs right there. Still pumping out all these units. He is getting Stimpak. Do not ever forget Stimpak. That is the worst thing you can do. Um, and we could, you know what? This was, I do believe, was gonna be a cheese. A little bit of a Hellion in the base. Perhaps, but uh, this pylon was here and these stalkers were placed very well. So that did not go off. No QXE type of cheese going on here. <clears throat> and um, that's a good reason to have map site. You see this uh, force pushing in. You know, right away, okay, you have to dedicate all your resources and, uh, to getting a, uh, a lot of units from your warp gates. So that gives you a good 20 second heads up, which is very important. 20 seconds is a huge amount of time. Uh, but well, Duck Lord Ra kind of forgetting to put down more pylons. Here's a big don't. Don't supply block yourself. Uh, that, that one I'll let explain itself. But here's a nice little tactic right here. Getting the high ground, though it's not very effective against these medevacs because they can see on high ground, as you'll be able to find out. Um... But splitting your army in this fashion is also pretty good against uh, a Terran in this situation because you don't want uh, Marauders to slow down the Zealots and then slow down the units if they're right behind them or anything else like that. <clears throat> uh, plus this way you can snipe off key units better. And another thing is don't, don't fight a Terran in a choke, especially when they have sight over you even if you're on a high ground. Just don't. It'll never end well for you. Trust me. Just trust me on this one. And kind of funky force field goes down. Uh, not much, but still warping in units. And this is basically going to be a good game. Here's a here's a really important do for you Terran players. Do expand when you're pushing very, uh, very hard like this. Because even if you lose all your units, you're going to come back with an expo. And you're still going to have a lot of units producing. Uh, another big don't, obviously, mac or another big do, obviously, macro while you're battling. It's very important to have put your hotkeys to use and keep pumping out units so y you don't get counterattacked and uh, just decimated. And yeah, basically from here, uh, the game goes downhill for Duck Lord, Duck Lord Ra. Still got this floaty floating factory. I don't really like that it was only put to use as a scout, but oh well. Could have used a scan. It would be a little less expensive than a factory. Here's another important do. If you have the ability, go for drops. You don't have to deal with uh, these annoying ramps that uh, really catch you in odd positions and you're on the low ground and not all of your units can attack. 
And you don't have to deal with any chokes like this, though if you're Terran, you, that does kind of give you the advantage. Uh, and you can go straight for the mineral line and uh, just let this one play out a little bit. Here comes the drop. And Duck Load Raw will now give the good game. There it is. All right, so what did we see here? Oh, geez. Okay, so it just restarted. Anyway, so what we saw, saw excuse me, was an early expand and a four gate. And you can't really combine the two for the reason we just saw. You can't spend as many resources on units that you would pump out with four gate, which is the whole point of it, is to pump out a lot of units very quickly and be, be able to be aggressive. Uh, you can't do that when you go for a fast expand because that's 400 minerals right off the bat and then you have to spend all the other minerals saturating it. It might play off in the long game, but when you're versing a Terran, uh, there's not much long game. Like statistics show, most games will be probably under 18 minutes, probably under 15 actually, uh, because Terran in this stage of the game, that uh, how far we've come so far, that they favor uh, early game pushes. So uh, we see that he goes for the fast expand plus four gate. That does not pay off whatsoever. Um, just went downhill from there. So I'm going to bring you part two here. And it's going to be the same two players. And it's going to be on uh, blistering sands this time. Uh, another little tiny do is do split up your workers. Uh, do split them in short. Uh, reason for this, some people just think it, it looks fancy, which it does. Um, it's good for the APMs and the micros. But also, I mean, if you send all your workers to one, then they sp spend time staring at the minerals and then scrambling to get to one that's actually available. So it does save time in that sense. And another thing is, see how far these minerals are away compared to these these minerals will get you more minerals faster because there's a shorter carry time so what I will always do uh, in my games or at least try to if I don't miss micro but normally I'm pretty good about it I get three of my drones over here so they they get the three closest minerals and three of my drones over here and then right away when I rally my workers I go to the ones that are open because if you go right here then it'll automatically go here, stare at it, then go over here. So you want to go to the ones that are open, and then I'm at 8. When I go for my ninth drone, I'm going to cl click it on one of these closest ones. Um, just really small stuff that does add up. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much quick, more quickly you can pump, uh, say, an overlord or a pylon out that you're like, wow, this timing is a lot faster than usual or seems a lot faster you'll notice it if you've been really into the habit of not splitting but I mean not that big of a deal 